It's made to stare twice. You see, over here we have our very, very amazing HCL generator. So right over here, this is our chloroalkali cell using a sodium borate and a PVA glue-based membrane. You can see that the anode chamber is a bit yellow. I can't see because I'm wearing anti-UV goggles. Now, it's yellow because this solution is a equilibrium between uh, hypochlorous and hydrochloric acid, but it's unstable and degrades automatically, so it's not really worth it. Over here, a current. That, that's actually just the voltage of the shunt, which is the two points in this wire. And I have to divide that by a certain number. I think overall that's 1.5 amps. It's not very much, but that doesn't matter. Over there are bubblers, and there's the actual thing. It contains UV, a UVC lamp. And since the chlorine is wet, it does not, uh, it does not explode. So what we have here is we have a quartz tube, a rubber stopper. Oh, this this warm stuff. So this rubber stopper obviously prevents from leaking. The quartz tube is what passes the uh, wet chlorine and hydrogen through the chamber. It goes into a jug of water, and it just bubbles out, you know, stuff. And the hydrochloric acid produced gets trapped by the water, which. I've tested this stuff, it gets more and more concentrated the longer you run it. Yeah, and the foils for reflecting it. The thing about the chloroalkali cell is you have to you have to really name these very well. If it starts leaking it's really dangerous because the chlorine that comes out of here is fairly concentrated. Now here I have a thermometer probe just so I can measure the temperature. Switch it on. These things are really important. Right now it's running 28. I expected this to get hotter anyway. It's, it, the current of the cell increases over time, so it's always good to have a current and temperature reading so you don't end reading so you don't end up uh, messing it up because that's not good. Overall, this right now is hooked up to a computer power supply. So because these things can run the lower currents without having trouble by other chlorine power supply. If I do that, it's gonna keep, it's, it's gonna hum and hum and hum. It's gonna make the weird noise and I don't want that. And that's the controller for the UV lamp. I put that uh, piece of metal so it can it gets hot because a cheap Chinese one. The UV lamp is around 9 watts. And overall, you just let this run the whole day, you feed salt into this. Once you see the anode chamber turn black, it means that the uh, electrolysis is pretty much done and your membrane can no longer uh, maintain the concentration gradient. Okay, so I'm back here with the uh, some of the HCL from the uh, chamber and as you can see, This stuff fizzes when I drop it onto the sodium carbon to bicarbonate, which is an indicator for it being acidic. And that's basically it. You know, this cell produces HCl, and I mean, because it's so hard to get it from where I'm in, it's quite good, despite the convolutedness of building and setting and troubleshooting and all.